Inside Age, uh, if you've seen season one, I played a, a bookie who books uh, uh, cricketers for match fixing, for, uh, for sporting business. In Inside Age 2, I continued that, but then um, the, the season is dealing with a lot of other issues that, that cricket deals with and how uh, my character is a part of it. And uh, it basically becomes an intrinsic part of the whole story in season two for me. Look, for me, I always believe you can't concoct stories out of nowhere. Uh, these things do happen. We have seen in the news that these things happen. Uh, there was a time when you know cricket was uh, the only thing we used to talk about in cricket was match fixing. So of course it's not all fiction, but uh, it's a fiction show. So we have taken a lot of things from reality, fictionalized them, and giving it out to audience for entertainment. Yeah. So I do watch the matches, yeah, and I know what goes behind. But you know whatever said and done, um, you cannot take away the hard work and the sportsmanship that comes along with this kind of a sport. It's a lot of pressure for the for the cricketers and. I think in every field there will be ways to succumb to things. You know, it happens in every field, whether it's sports, whether it's in our world of you know of films and media, uh, in business, everywhere there are ways. You know, where people can succumb to the wrong, but you can't take away what's right in that field. And uh, I do follow the Premier League, and I know how much hard work and how much uh, what it takes to basically be there and you know win matches for your team. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think cricket is. Um, is a, is a very big form of entertainment for us. It's a, it's a religion in our country. In fact, this series talks about both the things which are the biggest religions in our country, which bind actually us together. I mean, we might as a country be fighting over a lot of things, but when it comes to cricket and movies, we are all together. So I don't think so anything will change. People anyway m know much more than what we are showing actually. So Sisak, uh, you know, it's been about three, we are talking about Sisak today, but uh, it's been about three and a half years that we shot it. I shot Sisak in 2016, April, and I spoke to the director for the first time in 2015. Um, he just gave me a one-line narration that it's a silent film about two men in a Bombay local. And I was just sold there only because I've always wanted to do a silent film and I love the whole idea, the space of trains, you know, it's a different world, very much apart from uh, you know, our, our worlds. And I just like that possibility a lot. And plus I also knew that the technical team is very, very strong. No, no I was not, because I don't approach roles like that. The, w the only way I see a role is, will I, will I get up in the morning excited about it? Will I have butterflies in my stomach? Uh, is there something that I will learn through that? And the biggest reason I would do something is a director. I, I mean, a lot of uh, movies dealing with uh, the LGBT you know, community, but the, their stories, they have come to me after Sisak and they still do. But I have only done, uh, I've done, I did Sisak because uh, I wanted to work with the director. I mean, sometimes you work with the director and you, you figure out his vibe and you know that, you know, there's something beautiful that's going to come out. So it's never about the character. I mean, of course, I look at my role, but it's always about the director and how will he steer the whole thing in the story. Hi, I'm Jitin Gulati and you're watching me on uh, peepingmoon.com.